Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you six awesome things you can do with vectors in Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So as you might know, I'm starting to put Affinity Designer tutorials on my channel and the transition to that should be today this video where I show you what you can do inside of Affinity Photo with the Affinity Photo tools. So let's get started. Uh, one of my subscribers asked me if vector graphics always look this kind of boring, so it's just a shape with no texture and nothing. Um, could it be more interesting? And the answer is yes, it can. So. You can see right here, I went to the left side, I use this um, menu here and you can see there is a lot of pre-created shapes for you. I use the cock wheel tool for that or cock tool as it's called here. And I prepared a metal texture that I downloaded from the internet. I will link it in the video description. I will just drag that on here and you can see immediately our cogwheel does have a texture, a metal texture. But it doesn't look very real right now so we want to apply effect to that. So go over to effects and then where it says 3D, uh, again click on this little cogwheel here. Bam, and we have this kind of menu here. So now you make a hook here and you can see it starts to look 3D, but not very much. So we have to adjust the settings a little bit. So uh, for example, we can enhance the radius. This looks like bended metal right now. Um, what we can do here is here it says profile. You can go in here and as you can see, this gives you a lot of different profiles. These are standard basic profiles and you can work with them. You can adjust them to your own taste. You can see when I go in here, I can really shape this and give these uh, kind of different shapes. They are a bit limited, so of course this will never look completely 3D, uh, but you can give it a lot of interesting kind of border shapes and when you see kind of strange lines appearing, you can soften this a little bit so um, it's getting softer. Another thing you can do to make this uh, look more 3D or more real is down here you have the direction of the light. You can see when I move this around, the direction of the light is actually changing. And what I can do in here, uh, so let's for example, I can change the light color. Uh, let's go here to HSL color wheel. And I will select, uh, let's select a blue light. Uh, let's see, like this, a light blue. Uh, put the light over here on the sides. And now I can add a second light if I want to. And I can do this, for example, in a pink color. So we have a kind of a contrast and I can put it on the other side. As you can see now we have two light sources on the same, and they come from different sides on the same cockwheel, so you can play around with the light sources. You also have an ambient light that you can use, and you can use this ambient light um, bar here to make the light um, brighter or darker. And with this, you can adjust your, um, well, your look of the, of the design if you want to. And like I said, you can use any kind of different colors or color combinations that fit to your design. Uh, let's enable here the gray background. You can see this looks pretty good. It looks kind of 3D. It still looks flat, but for something that is a vector graphic, of course, uh, the texture is still pixel, uh, but it's now a textured vector graphic that you can use in your design. So this is a very easy and fast way to do this. I want to show you another trick. So that's the second trick I'm going to show you. And for this, I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool. And with this, you can do really quick buttons that you can use on the internet, for example. Let's change the color to a nice um, orangey yellow like this. And you can use this kind of button shape, but up here where it says corner, you can go up to 50% uh, where this gets kind of this pill shape. So you can go, of course, with any kind of um, roundness of the corners. Let's go with the pill shape. This is kind of popular online. And this time we go over to the effects and select bevel and emboss. So we go in here and 
This gives you a lot of different abilities to create buttons. Let's push this up here a little bit so you can see better what I'm doing. So you see here there's this kind of pillow shape, inner, outer and emboss. Let's use inner first and I will enhance the radius and already you can see that you get this kind of button look and uh, you can of course then uh, again soften this uh, you have here the same profiles that you can use so you can create as you can see really crazy buttons if you want to uh, with uh, like multiple riches on the outside all these kind of things so you can go really creative or just do like an old school um, button if you want to just remove the profile so you have this kind of round button and down here you can say uh, you can see that you have a color for the highlight and you have a color for the shadow so it doesn't have to be black we can of course uh, for example we can go uh, for red or for a blue or what any kind of color we want to and you see that this has a kind of combination so yellow and blue gives green of course um, so you can influence the look of your button. So you can have this kind of line, a nice looking sunrise combination of uh, orange and red in here. Uh, in, in this case, orange and pink. So you have to play around a little bit on how this multiplies with the background. Okay, so this is the second trick. And like I said, you can get super creative. Oh, by the way, I forgot. I wanted to show you different types in here. So if we go, for example, for pillow, this gives us this outer look where it is pressed into the background. And um, when you go for emboss, you can see that the button is embedded and comes out of the background. So there's a lot of different looks in here. Then we have outer where the button is flat and we only have this rise around the outside. Uh, so you can do different looks. You have to remember in this case, if you want to have this effect outside the button that you have to export it as a PNG with a transparent background. The way you do this is uh, that you would disable the background in your picture and then go up here to um, document and say transparent background. So it's like this and you can see now we have these kind of transparent effects that would be exported with your document and then if you apply it uh, to another background it, it again looks like this where it comes out of the background. So really interesting effect. Um, I would rather go uh, with one that is more the classic style, but you can choose whatever you want. Uh, so this is the second trick. Let's go on to the third one. And this is how to work with gradients, which you can also do. So we want to do something looks a little bit like a billiard ball. So I'm going to create um, a ball in here. Very simple. And I will go up here and instead of the fill color, I'm going to select the gradient and I want to set the gradient to radial. That's important. You can see here now the white is in the middle and the yellow is on the outside. I will change the yellow to a red because we're going to create a red billiard ball. And after you've done this, you click here on the gradient tool and now you have these two anchor points of the gradient so you can move this up here and you can already see that you now you have a highlight on one side of the ball and um, with this little line here in the middle you can adjust how big the highlight should be so we want to have it a little bit smaller but we also want to have a shadow on the other side so I will duplicate this shape duplicate and then again we click down here on the ellipse tool and now I'm going in here again and I will change the color on one side to black and the opacity zero on, on the other side also black but the opacity at 100%. And now we are going and switch over back to the gradient tool. So again, we have these two anchor points here and I will move this down here. And now again, I can use this little blue line here to adjust how strong my shadow will be. And you can play around with the position of this kind of anchor point for the black side uh, on the strength of the shadow. And you can see that this simulates kind of nicely how you would have uh, um, a billiard ball looking in, an, in a vector kind of design. Okay, so 
third trick now comes um the wait how many multi grade ah yeah okay now comes the fourth trick sorry i was confused for a second let's uh, combine these i select both layers and uh, control g to put them in a group so we have this now the next trick is very uh, nice to use by the way a thing i want to point out i forgot about that is when you use all these kind of effects make sure that you click down here on scale with object that's really important because when you scale the object and you don't have this activated the effect is staying in the same size it's not scaling with it uh, so suddenly it looks completely different so this is really important to look out for so I will resize this real quick. I will do the same thing over here. And when you click this, this is good for all the effects you have in here. So you have only to do it once. Um, I don't think we need to do it here because this is a gradient. Um, okay, so the next trick I want to show you. It's pretty fun. So I will just draw out... Oh, one second. Let's switch the color over, uh, for example, to a red color. Why is this... Um, something is strange right now. One second. Ah, uh, something's not working. Why is this gray? Um, okay. RGB sliders. Okay, there we go. So this is now in red. And uh, we will create multiple of those. So let's again go to my rectangle tool and I'm just drawing multiple shapes randomly on the screen of course in your case you would have planned out a design with different shapes um, as you want to need them or use them and the cool thing I want to show you right now is when you select all of those so you click on the upper layer then you hold shift and click on the lower layer so it selects all the layers in between and now if you go over to the gradient tool uh, let's switch to gradient here. Whoops. Yeah, this one. You can see that we can use a gradient over all of these shapes at the same time. So that's very, very useful uh, to have kind of a unified design where you have this kind of gradient flowing through all of the different design elements. So this is a very nice trick and um, probably... If you tried this in the past, you try to uh, adjust all these kind of gradients for the individual shapes, but you can select all them together and just do that. And the next trick I want to show you, I'll delete this real quick, is uh, there is not really kind of a way to subtract shapes in Affinity Photo, vector shapes, I mean by that. Uh, but you can still do that in a tricky way. So I will set this to blue here just to show you easier. And I will use, uh, let's use a hard shape here. And usually you would be able to select now both shapes and subtract them from each other. But Affinity Photo doesn't have this option because it's not a vector program. But what you can do is that you, let's set the second one to a different color so you can see it actually. What you can do now is you just drag this onto the other uh, layer like the rectangle layer and then you set the hard layer in this case to the mode erase and this will hide it and also hide the rectangle layers you can see now if I now choose my rectangle layer and move it over the other parts there is a hole in the middle of the shape that the other layer had the hard layer had so you can subtract it in a visual way it's not a real subtraction it doesn't really have that shape so if you would have to have this shape in curves that doesn't work but visually for your design process you can use that okay here comes the last trick I want to show you and that's also super useful uh, you can see here you have a pie tool and we can do with it is uh, hold the shift key so you have a perfect circle and this draws out this kind of pie and you would want to use that uh, for example for charts you can also draw pac-man with that of course but if you want to draw a chart you want to have a certain percentage in here but when you look up here you have a start angle and you have an end angle and you can move them around but how do you know how much percentage that is of the whole circle so what you're going to do is we do know that a circle has 360 degrees, which means that 1% is 3.6 degrees. So if I want, for example, to have, let's say, 
uh, 67%, I type it up here, 67 times 3.6 and then hit enter and there you go, that's 67, that's in the negative space of course and what you can do to turn this around is you just click up here to invert angles and bam, you have the opposite. So this is now 67%. Uh, and of course, you can click up here and rotate this. And if you hold the shift key, it is rotating in 15% iterations. So you can turn it by 90%. And then you have this where you have a nice straight line here in the middle and it all works out and you can point out percentages. By the way, just as a hint, this also works with the donut shape which gives you the ability to stack different um, percentages within each other. So let's, let me show you this real quick too. With the whole radius, you can make the outline thinner and then you can again go in here and adjust these angles on both sides, of course. So you can go here to 0% and then again, we can go in here 67 times 3.6 there we go and we have this we can invert the angle and so we have this again and now you could for example duplicate this layer and then hold um, control and shift and grab one of these blue anchor points here and move it inwards and you can see you have now a second shape where you could again adjust the percentage so you have multiple percentages and of course you could adjust the color so it's clear when you have the text I would make the text in the same color for example so it's clear what kind of percentage you mean or you could put it up here as a text so you can create really nice designs so let's say uh, biomatter and uh, well it's just it's just an example you put this here for example on the text and then a second text below that for the second one I don't know what you would write here I don't know um, cost Let's go like this and the text would need to be smaller. So this is just a, a quick example, but like this, you could show percentages. Okay, this was the video for today with the six different uh, tricks on how to use vectors right in Affinity Photo. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.